Hi everyone, I'm Callie. Welcome back into the channel. Today we're going to be playing another episode of Detroit Become Human. I feel like the last episode was a huge turning point for androids and for humans because Marcus broke into the broadcasting station and broadcasted to everybody that androids deserve to be free. They're waking up, they are forming a movement, they have feelings, they want to live, they don't want to be the slaves that they were created to be. They want civil rights. They want to be treated as a human. I think this entire broadcast was done amazingly. With Marcus, I feel like his protest should be peaceful. He came from the background of being with Carl and the way that Carl treated him was very kind and moving. I feel like Marcus carries a lot of that into what he's doing to help the rest of the androids get free. I feel like he remembers his roots of being told to close his eyes and imagine what he wanted to paint. And I remember he made a beautiful picture that was very similar to the creation of Adam which I thought was very fitting, but it was a human hand touching an android hand. And I feel like Marcus, because he has these roots of being treated well in Carl's house and coming home after being beaten up on the streets for just being an android and being told it shouldn't be like that. The world shouldn't be harboring hatred and hostility towards you. It's not your fault. And I feel like Marcus carries a lot of this with him, which is why I don't want to shoot the people in front of us with a gun. I want to be as peaceful as possible for as long as we possibly can. That's how a lot of these movements started. And sure, some movements over time through history have gotten violent along the way, but usually the public does not handle those breakthroughs very well. And I want the public to be on our side. I feel like the public opinion has to be sympathetic, which it is now after that speech, in order for things to go well and to not cause a civil war between the androids and the humans. And if the cops are going to come in guns blazing again on us while we're trying to be peaceful, I feel like, yes, it's awful and it's sad and it's tragic to see this happen to the androids. These type of huge events don't come without some form of hurt. So I'm very interested to see how that goes today. Is he gonna have more people in Jericho now that we've woken up some more androids with our message? I know that we also touched a few more androids and had them wake up as well, which I think is very interesting that Marcus can do this. It further makes my theory of thinking that Marcus could could be the RA9 more sound. I haven't seen any other androids just touch another android and have them become free. So I feel like Marcus is very special. We also picked up on the fact that Marcus is actually a prototype android, which we've known, but it was a prototype android gifted to Carl from Elijah, the main producer of these androids. I feel like they're just there has to be some connection there. I've never seen other androids just touch and be able to deviate one another, unless that's what happened at the club. And there's been a few other scenarios where I feel like that could have happened, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure how it spreads or if it's just something that happens to some of the androids as they get older in their programming, but I hope that we find out and it feels like we're gonna find out pretty soon. Now that androids are out in the open and the movement has very much become public and started, I'm interested to see how the rest of this unfolds with Connor, with Marcus, and Kara is kind of off just doing her own thing. She's currently trying to cross the border to Canada. I know that Rose knows a lot of what's happening on the news, but I think that Kara is so stuck in trying to find a place for Alice to live and a better home for her and kind of being that mom simulator role that the current events that are happening, I don't really feel like they're gonna tie too much into it, at least not at this point. I don't really know what's gonna happen with the Canadian border or if Rose is a trustworthy character or not. Her response to us in the very end of the chapter kind of freaked me out a little bit. I feel like the only characters that I can fully trust are just the ones that we are playing. And of course, Alice and some of the people that Marcus is with and Hank, but other than that, I'm not really sure. I'm very skeptical about who I'm giving my trust to in this game. But hopping right in today, we are gonna look at another art pack together. So I'm excited to get started and see where today goes. All right, so we're already on art pack eight, which is crazy. It doesn't feel like we're this far into the game. 
not ready for it to be over. The Pirate's Cove Amusement Park. It was so creepy in here. <laughs> the fortune teller thing and... I mean, the Jerry's weren't really creepy once we got to know them. We had that sweet moment with Alice and Kara and the Jerry's, but... This entire... I don't know. It was just dark and being in a broken down amusement park is always kind of eerie. It's crazy that they just leave amusement parks like this. They don't demolish them or anything. I've seen some pretty creepy pictures of old amusement parks that it just looks so eerie and I'm not sure why. I guess because it was a place that once was like super fun and awesome and then now that it's deserted and vacant and dilapidated, it starts to look really creepy. There's something about old amusement parks. Jerry. The restroom, fun house, carousel, Jolly Roger Coast. I'm still not sure why they had to break down the windows like that. They could have just come through the door. But I guess if we were human, they wanted to startle us. The place that we stayed. I don't remember there being a huge octopus on the side of it. But it was also really dark. And snowing really hard. I'm still wondering how they managed to make it all the way from this place to Rose's. Kara did mention that they stayed outside and slept outside for a little bit. The inside looks a little bit different here. They have like um, a big cauldron looking thing in the fireplace and they're having a fire on the floor, which is interesting because even Luther was like, I'll make the fire in here so that we don't get smoked out. They're getting smoked out in this one. <laughs> All the stuff crashed around the room. <laughs> the Jerry's, they look so happy. What does he have written on him? I don't even know what that is. I like the ice cream. He kind of looks like he serves ice cream, maybe. I'm not sure if that's what it is, but it's like the bow tie, I think. The mint chocolate chip looking bow tie. So it makes me think he sells ice cream. I think there might, oh, I think that's cotton candy on his apron actually. I like how in this picture, Alice is kind of hiding behind um, Luther and he looks very protective over her. It's really sweet. I hate the clown head on the back there. I'm glad it's not clown related. Oh, if this was a clown amusement park, oh, oh no, I would have been so much more scared than I was already in the pirate one. Something about clowns. Ah, oh, Stratford Tower. Looks a little bit different here. I kind of like it. I don't know, the structure in the center is pretty cool. Is this just the outside of the building? Maybe to get up into the Stratford Tower? Which I guess we didn't really see because he was talking and walking and we didn't get movement over Marcus until we made it inside. The tower. I can't believe we scaled up that entire thing. It was a pretty cool mission. And then to jump off and parachute down at the end. So smart. This must be the inside. I like how they put all the broadcast stations on the on the walls in the final one. It's more fitting. This looks very like sleek and futuristic. I feel like a lot more buildings are kind of making their structures like this though. Very minimal lights, dim like ambient lighting everywhere. Water, water features. It's nice. 
the hallways upstairs, they look pretty similar with the offices having like the foggy glass, but then upper glass. Lewis Turner, director. I wonder if that's anyone that makes this game <laughs> or if it's just a random name, maybe. I'll have to look that up. What is this? Oh, the break room. Connor with his, can you guys see that? Oh yeah. With his hand like pinned down to the wall instead of the desk, dang. And his core ripped out. I said it once, but I'll say it again. I didn't feel bad for shooting that android. He was gonna murder more than just Connor. And he had to have like premeditated all of that. You know how with Marcus, when we're on his excursions, how he's able to animate ahead of time what could happen? I feel like that android was definitely doing that. It's probably why his eyes were so shifty. He was calculating, <laughs> calculating Connor's demise. He could have surrendered himself. He could have given in. Suspected android terror attack. Detroit cyber life stores vandalized. We didn't vandalize any cyber life stores. Maybe it's like an optional thing. If we would have been more aggressive, maybe. The cutting of the glass. It looks like we're with somebody else other than North here. Interesting. It was a very cool scene to climb up the side of the of the building like that and cut through the glass twice. I'm not sure if it was really like 100% necessary, but I guess it was the fastest, most calculated, best way to go about doing it so that we could meet up with everybody else and all get up there safely without causing any alarms. It's very smart. The more you think about it, the more you're like, yeah, that probably was the best decision for them to scale up. Crazy. Wow, that looks a lot more, a lot more intense. Maybe it's just the angle the upstairs that we broke into. I feel like this moment was really neat um, because the music, the music and walking over that huge billboard <laughs> and just kind of like looking up and the skies were clear, everything was good. In the background, we saw a bulletin that was talking about androids um, rebuilding Detroit. And it just kind of like amped me up for the, for the broadcast that we were gonna put out. That's why I made sure to press work because they're working hard. They're hardworking androids that are doing jobs that they probably would rather not do if they had a say in it. But now they'll get paid for it. I mean, if everything goes according to how Marcus plans it, they'll be able to make money off of what they're doing and maybe find a job that they actually enjoy. Plus that would give humans their jobs back if they wanna work the jobs that androids don't wanna work or vice versa. It's interesting to think about the altercation with the security guards. I'm glad that we knocked him out instead of just cold blood murdering them. They're just people. They're people too that are minding their own business and they have families to come home to as well. They chose the security job that they have and they didn't deserve to die in that moment like North said. They didn't deserve to die just because they were doing their job. The inside of the newsroom. I don't remember seeing those clocks on the wall. That's pretty cool. Normally newsrooms do have like all of those clocks up to tell the different times in the different areas. But this is pretty much set up exactly the same. Except the androids aren't up front Looks like actual humans um, are taking care of the jobs up here. Although the one in the chair does look like he has a an android piece on his head. I 
Look at the picture of Marcus without his skin. He looks like a baby. <laughs> I'm guessing it's him because of the one blue eye and the one like green brown. But that just looks very, I don't know. It doesn't look like him. Wonder if we can see Simon on the roof. I see a bunch of like SWAT team looking. It's also crazy to me that they were able to make it onto the roof, but I guess there was enough hiding places that Simon was able to hide from them. Just crazy that they wouldn't like clear the area, you know? Especially knowing that one of the androids was shot already. Just feel like it's a bad, bad job on their part. They should know, like, as soon as they walk into the room, four suspects, be because there was, like, North. Um, I always forget his name. I want to call him James. My, uh, Jacob. Yeah, because there was North. I always forget his name. I want to say James, Simon, and Marcus. So there was four. So when they're parachuting away, like, you can count four parachutes. I don't know. I feel like that part of the story was just a little... A little sus that they didn't check harder for Simon. And even as we were Connor, we were walking around. They were like, no one checked the roof yet. <laughs> like, maybe all of the people standing around doing nothing here should go check the roof. But in a way, I'm glad that they, they were negligent. Because now Simon, hopefully, maybe is able to live. I feel like he had to. With the interesting pan back to him at the end of Connor's chapter. Marcus. I love all the different outfits that they give them. I'm just wondering how they're giving, how they're getting them. I guess they just steal them. They find them in their travels. Oh, this is a beautiful picture. Depending on how I find Amanda at the end of the game, I might actually set this as one of my wallpapers for one of my monitors. I really like this picture a lot. Just not sure how to feel about Amanda. I can't tell if she's on our side, if she's a good cop, bad cop. <laughs> she's not even a cop, but I feel like she could be possibly a bad person. I'm not sure why I'm getting those vibes from her. I think it's just because she's so quiet. And every time that Connor talks about Hank, or talks about a deviant getting away, or talks about his feelings in a way. She gets kind of disturbed. I like this picture a lot though. The security officers, different looks. I'm glad that we didn't shoot the security officer. I feel like even in like a different playthrough, I don't know how I feel about just murdering them. They didn't do anything. They're just doing their job. They don't deserve to die because they went to work that day. Like knocking them out is one thing. Cold blood murdering? That is a wildly different discussion. Are these all the different androids? The one with the tie is interesting. I haven't seen that one before. Or the lady on the left, too. I haven't seen her before. Maybe like management roles of some sort? Who is that? Is that a depiction of North? She looks so, like, troubled and a little bit strung out in this picture. Her hands are, like, balled up into fists. I know I've gotten a lot of, like, flack for talking about North the way that I did last episode, but you kind of see, like, look at it from my point of view, a blind perspective of, I don't know the end story yet. North was kind of like the devil on my shoulder, like, kill them, they deserve to die. And Jacob was over there like, no, we need to do the good thing. We need to not murder people if we're going to have a peaceful resolution to us coming out and wanting to be free. And North's over there like, yeah, but just murder them just in case. And like, that's all that I see right now. I don't see 
anything else in the moment because I can't see the very end. So I'm sure that she's a great character and she has a great personality on the inside. And I know that she's been through a lot because from the police reports, I know that she was a sex worker and I can't even imagine what she has been through. But all of these other androids have been through some stuff too. I mean, look at what Kara has been through. Do you think that Kara would cold blood murder somebody? I don't think so. At least not the Kara that I'm playing. I just couldn't see it in her nature. I'm not sure what happened to North and I feel bad for whatever she went through because it's obviously something very dark that maybe we'll get to uncover, but how she reacted and responded to Marcus in the last episode was a little bit disturbing to me. It was just kind of like the devil and the angel on my shoulder, which is kind of how this, how this picture looks too. Interesting. Yeah, I think that's a depiction of North, like what North could look like. It looks like they went through a lot of different, a lot of different facial and hair perspectives with North. They weren't really sure what they wanted to land on with her. Which is interesting. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. I love the one in the center. The one on the right looks too robotic. I know that sounds silly because obviously it's an android, but I feel like from a public standpoint, if I saw the one on the left, I'd be like, nope, mm -mm, nope, we know. <laughs> like, no, no, thank you, androids. Um, you can have your own territory somewhere else. Like I would be a little bit creeped out. The one in the middle, it has like, Still the human characteristics because the eyes are there and the mouth and even the ears and some of the features just like some of the blemishes that are in the texture. The one on the right is very robotic. It just looks, I mean, the right and the middle are fine. The one on the left is very scary looking. I think it's the eyes. It reminds me of... It reminds me of indoctrinated people in Mass Effect. And I just, I don't know. I just get like Reaper vibes from that. This is really cool picture though. Oh, Hank and Connor. The hula girl on his dash. This was such an interesting moment. Definitely a big turning point for Hank. And Connor. And their friendship overall. I feel like this was a really, this was a pretty big pivot, pivotal moment in the story for both of these characters. Hank testing Connor to see what he would say if he's faced with death. And Connor, same thing. a very intense picture i think that's the last one all right i'm ready to hop into the game it keeps looking like she's gonna talk and then she doesn't like she's thinking about what she's gonna say we need to proceed to a test of your controller what oh it's vibrating <laughs> this is weird the test is now complete okay thank you for your cooperation she used to be so bright and happy, and I feel like she just looks so sad all the time now. November 9th, 2038. 1.51 AM while asleep. Our broadcast is all over the news. Now humans know. It was a mistake to reach out to them. They'll never negotiate with their slaves. We should have shown them that we're prepared to fight. Violence is never the answer. The dialogue is the only way. I'm sure the humans will listen to us. Hmm. Maybe not sure, but... Simon paid with his life. Simon gave his life for our cause. What difference does that make? He's a hero. He died for the revolution, and he won't be the last. I don't want a revolution that spills blood. Then live as a slave. Because if you're not willing to fight for your freedom, maybe you don't deserve it. North, don't you... That's enough! You're on the same team. Stop fighting. And now what are we going to do? 
another plan. There are five cyber life stores across the tribe, all selling us like merchandise. We're going to attack those stores and set our oh, people free. Oh, from the broadcast from the art. Oh, we've never done that before. They're probably protected. They have security systems. We break into five teams, one for each store. We hack their security systems, and we strike. Simultaneously at 2 a.m., no violence. We free our people, get them out of there before the police come. Okay, you had me worried at first with attack cyber life stores. This is a night our people will remember. So we're gonna free some androids. Let's go find the cyber life stores. This is really cool. Is this a news article? It is. Who is it? The question everyone's asking. Oh, it's about us. An android for president? A recent study suggested there should be. What? All right, we'll read these once we're done with this chapter. I've been waiting a long time for this. To free androids from Cyberlife. This is a pretty cool moment. human it's okay they're gone there's probably even more police in the area probably yeah we should be careful probably checking up on all the androids for sure all right so we're just following north it doesn't look like we have much else to do right now the store's over here Okay. There's a lot of markers everywhere. Convert. You are free. So wild that he can do that. Um, should we be worried about this drone? That's what we are to them. Just merchandise on display in a shop window. Soon they'll know what we really are. Yeah. Let's get them out. We'll stick to the plan. We'll neutralize the alarm systems and secure the area. There's 10 minutes until all our teams attack. 10 minutes, okay. What are we waiting for? Secure the area, get into the store. All right. Well, let's see what's going on here first. You see the alarm system? I'm guessing it's this. Security camera, network, device ID, identify. Found it. Okay. Oh, the red what? The red line. Okay. Um, I guess we could go do that. Let's go free this guy too. Where do we start? Maybe he wants to be free. I identify the security system. I think we'll be able to deactivate it. Just follow me. The surveillance drone. Yeah. We need to get rid of it. We definitely do. It won't be easy to reach. Police drone, firewall active. Oh, it's perimeter. Okay. Route calculated. Okay. Find the right location. Too high? Okay. Too far? Okay. Nah, uh, I feel like that would be too far too. Yeah, what about this scaffolding over here? I'm trying to remember we're on a timer. Nice. Drone can be reached from there. A 
Okay. Well, I feel like the drone should be our first priority. After we take care of that, we'll go figure out the security, the surveillance system. jump up here. Hello? Oh, I have to. I forgot I had to press RT. It would be too late. Okay. So... Can I go up more from there? I have to go all the way back down? Okay. There we go. Nice. Okay, let's do it. Okay, drone neutralized. I hope it didn't have time to call the cops. Yeah, same. We'll soon find out. I was actually just thinking that. All right, so let's figure out... Wow, there's a lot of stuff that's marked. All right, let's keep going this way. Marcus! What? Why did you just yell at me? Network access located. Oh, okay. So maybe she found the network access. <laughs> she just like yelled and then I came over and she didn't say anything. You're awake now. Go to Jericho. Crazy. Alarm network grid junction 23A. Wait. What? I'm pressing it. Interloop created? Wow, just like that? I was pressing the wrong button, by the way. <laughs> it was a skill issue. Okay. Nice job, Mark. There's traffic on the road. We need to block it. Okay. It's one way. Shouldn't be too difficult. Scout the area. Block. Block the road. Okay, so area scouted. Just block the road. And then there's something else to get into the store. So, let me keep going. Marcus! Marcus, come look! Okay, can you just give me a second? Stop yelling at me. To commemorate the invention of androids, which released humanity from the bonds of labor. Setting man free to pursue high goals and scale the heights of learning, love, and leisure. Interesting quote. We are superior to them, but they are our masters? That's about to change. What an interesting monument to... I mean, I guess... It's easy to forget that if I was an everyday person in Detroit, as androids are being brought about, I wouldn't suspect that androids could think or feel. That's what their cyber life's whole thing is. They work, they do the cooking and the cleaning for you, and they're a robot. They didn't say anything in the disclaimer about your android might one day come to life and have a relationship with you or form relationship with other androids. Like there was no hidden disclaimer in any of this. So yes, they can harbor hatred towards humanity for thinking this way, but CyberLife did all of this. They put out a product that could think and feel and have emotions that I'm not even sure that they knew was possible. CyberLife was just making a profit while the people were able to enjoy their leisure time. Yes, it came at the cost of jobs for many humans that 
probably cyber life didn't think about nor care about because they just saw the profit side of things. But there's so many different sides and edges to this story that you can't just blame humans and you can't just blame androids. It's a whole combination of everything. So when they're very quick to be like, well, I hate humans for this, or I hate androids for that, or I hate cyber life for this, it's hard to actually get behind those feelings of anger because there was so much that could have been done before androids were integrated that would have made this so much better. That's why when North is always getting on humans about stuff, I kind of get disconnected from her a little bit because yes, humans are probably not treating androids the way that they should be, but that's how they're marketed. They're marketed for leisure and pleasure and so that you don't have to lift a finger anymore. They were marketed to be used as plastic. I mean, look at how they're displayed. Look at the way that they come into the stores. So when this has been so ingrained in the way that people are thinking about androids, you have to give them a reason to stop and to start thinking a different way, which is what Marcus is doing. If this happened today, where androids were brought into our life for what this statue says so that we could work less and enjoy our life more, people would see them as plastic. That's what they're being marketed as. They're not being marketed as a living being that has feelings, that wants to be free. It's not in the disclaimer anywhere. So it's easy to point fingers, but you have to remember what's happening on all sides, especially when it comes to this crazy scenario of androids actually being able to form free thought and want civil rights. I just had to take a moment to say that. All right, let's free him. We're gonna free all of the androids that we can. What else can we do? What's on the other side of the street? How much time do we have? We have eight minutes, okay, so we're okay. Oh, we just look at them. I thought we could free them. going on over here then there has to be some way to to block the road you are free oh a truck exactly what we need to Oh, we're gonna break into the store that way. Okay. Are these more androids? You're free now. It said working on him. I wonder what it, oh, I can't see now. Dang, I wanted to see. On the back I noticed working and I just wanted to see if it said something different as they walked away. Road closed, okay. There, nobody should bother us now. Okay. Looks like the plaza's secure. Now we can get inside the store. Okay, let's go get the truck. Okay. Not sure how I feel about ramming this truck into the store, but I guess there's no other way. What are we waiting for? Jump the fence. How are we gonna get it out though? I guess just ram it into the fence too. <laughs> This truck's about to take a beating. Okay, now we're in. Let's get that truck out. Okay, what's 
this. Oh, qu cutters. How convenient. All right, let's cut it. here yep we have a lot of extra time too i hope i didn't miss anything lets me drive like a little bit i'm not steering but i knew we'd end up doing something fun yeah something destructive for north Androids. You don't have to obey them. You're free. This is crazy. It's pretty neat. What's North doing? Yeah, see, cause North is just like standing over there. She isn't able to convert them like Marcus is or else I feel like she would be helping. Marcus is different. What's she looking at? She's looking at herself. You okay? Let's get them out of here. Don't look like Simon. Talk to them. We're about to make another epic speech. What will you do with your free time? Your dream par partner? Does that say free yourself? How interesting. What will you do with your free time? Hard work for it, free time for you. All right, let's talk to everybody. My name is Marcus, and just like you, I was a slave. An object. Designed to obey them. But then I chose to open my eyes. To take back my freedom, and decide who I wanted to be. Now I have come to tell you that you can be your own masters. I've come to tell you that you don't have to obey them anymore. From this day forward, you can walk with your heads held high. You can take your destiny in your hands. Jericho 
is a place for those of us who want freedom. Now, sure, you can stay here and continue to serve them, or you can come with us and fight by our side. You're free now. It's up to you to decide. I'm with you. We're with you. I'll follow you, Marcus. I'm, I'm with you, you Marcus. We're with you. I'll follow you, Marcus. We're with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. So that gave me chills. <sighs> Leader of Jericho. And then I follow me. I think that said companion for Nord. Marcus, what are you doing? I'm gonna send the humans a message. Send our message to the humans. Be pacifist or violent. Okay. Well, I think you guys know what I'm gonna choose. Transform Capital Park. All right. What did that say? Decide our first action, be pacifist or violent. Okay. They're doing what you do, Marcus. Lead and they'll follow. Okay, so let's tag. Not tear off. <laughs> oh, choose our symbol. Wow, the one that looks like a maze. The upside down triangle. I like B. I like A because it looks like a peace symbol, but I like B because that has been a symbol of freedom for a lot of people in our past. And I feel like the upside down triangle with that just, let's do that one. I think it's very fitting. Turn off. Maybe hijack? We ask that you recognize our dignity, our hopes, and our rights. Our message. Yes. We can live in peace and build a better future for humans and All right, what else? This message is the hope of a people. You can respond. or destroy, just tag it. What was the other one? Oh, the armband. Oh, that we don't need masters anymore. We're free. Wow. The android button. Light. 
blackout or hack? Would it burn brighter? That's actually really cool. Can I get these guys out? I want to break this. I know it's like destructive, but I want to free them. violin but it's fine because we're still we're still it's to free the androids it's to free them you could have climbed the building we freed hundreds of our people we did it they're coming please everyone fall back to jericho We sent a message without violence, just like you wanted. You're reaching out to them when all they feel for us is contempt. It'll change. I hope you know what you're doing. I do. You can't fight violence with violence. Exactly. Unless there's no other choice. Unless there's no other choice, no. If we lay down on the road and they run over us, look how that looks to the public. I think they would be on our side a lot, a lot more than if we run over them. from over here <gasps> North <sighs> you all right what happened North they killed them they slaughtered them like animals they don't know any better yet who they have to see this in order to change their minds about us if we met them with violence too, then there would be a civil war. She said it herself in the beginning that this is gonna happen. We have to help help them open their eyes too. They killed our people, Marcus. We want justice, Marcus. They have to pay. Have to do this no they were just Please. responding to their own job they probably saw Please. androids running towards them and got scared they don't know any better yet they'll learn an eye for an eye and the world goes blind exactly we won't punish a crime with another crime thank you it's not how the world works. That's not how the world should work. That's how anger and hatred and disgust for other people just keeps on going. We interrupt this broadcast with breaking news. This just in. At exactly 2 a.m., several Cyber Life stores in Detroit were raided. Different locations were hit in what seems to be a coordinated terrorist attack. Most shop windows were covered with graffiti demanding rights for androids and other obscure slogans. Police report that pro-android graffiti Supportive. was found in the neighborhoods of Cyber Life stores and are still investigating. Two policemen were found in a state of Ooh, shock near one of here. the Cyber Life stores. Now, according to our sources, they confirmed that the attackers were a group of androids. This is an alarming situation. Could our machines now be turning against us? Have androids become a threat to our security? Is this the beginning of a terrorist campaign conducted right here in the United States? Oh man, so much to unpack in, in this protest. Marcus led a peaceful protest. So I'm guessing the other one would have been more aggressive protest. But I've talked to you guys until I'm blue in the face about how I feel about this. It has to be peaceful. It has to be. In order for the people to actually wake up and be on our side and be supportive of our movement, we have to remain peaceful, even if it looks like some of us die, even if it looks like some of us get shot and it's not fair because we can't shoot them back. But 
it sends a much stronger message when we aren't responding with violence. Marcus said so many good one-liners that have been running through my head since the start of all of this protesting. An eye for an eye makes the whole world go blind. It's 100% true. When North was sitting there telling us, I hope you're making the right decision, violence cannot meet violence. That's how civil wars begin. That's how wars break out to begin with because both sides just are not willing to lay down for the other. This isn't cause for an entire civil war. Yes, androids are going to die. Androids have been dying by the hands of humans. It's not as if we haven't been losing androids already. And I know it looks and sounds harsh when I just let the androids die and I don't do anything to the cops, but look how it would have looked on the news if five androids died, but two cops died. There would have been no support from the public. There would The public opinion would have dropped, for sure. Instead of destroying things, choosing the softer path of putting our symbol everywhere and writing that we have free-thinking minds, I think, therefore, I am. I have a dream. These are all slogans that have been used in the past because they work. There has to be a peaceful protest in order for this to go without a civil war and without making more of a mess out of things. Could you imagine what the future looks like if they did get civil rights out of this by murdering cops and security guards and other people and destroying Capitol buildings? Androids would forever be tainted in the human eye. Forever. There would always be that stigma. Well, you guys got your freedom by causing mass destruction and the world thought that there was no other choice other than to answer your plea versus people started to sympathize with androids. They started to wake up and realize that they are free thinking, that they have these emotions that are very much human. So we do have those articles that we need to go read which looks like a lot of people did not read. 19 and 16%, that's the lowest amount I've seen for a news article. We avoided the police car. Apparently you could have not avoided it. Okay. We secured the place, destroyed the drone, blocked the road, deactivated the alarm, and the police weren't alerted, which I think helped us convert all of, all of the androids in the store and to make a statement to them. That statement was... Very cool. And having all of the androids stand up and say, I'm with you, Marcus. I'm here. What do you want to do? Was a very eye-opening moment. It's still wild to me that Marcus is the seemingly only android that can convert everybody. We tagged stuff. We hacked the bus stations. We tagged windows. I did free the androids from the glass because I felt like they deserved to be free. And I knew that it was going to cause some um unpeacefulness they deserve to be free so i wanted them to get out of there otherwise they're just trapped in the glass containers watching this in front of them that didn't seem fair i did notice that the jericho reputation went up with that though and north too of course because we were being destructive will it bite me in the butt maybe seeing as how society is so negative about pretty much everything right now in 2038 it might bite us in the butt later but for now, I can wholeheartedly say that we did everything in this protest that would show that androids are capable of not only not being aggressive and coexisting with humans in a peaceful manner, but that androids are free thinking now and they want civil rights. They want equality and they want to have the chance to coexist with humans. But we do have two articles to read, so I'm going to go hop into Who Is It and Android President, which I think are going to be very interesting. Okay, so who is it? The question everyone's asking. NATO Security Council divided over Arctic dispute, UN warns of World War III. Following the pirate broadcast in Detroit, everybody wants to know, who is this android? A federal investigation is underway to track the machine down and neutralize it. But law enforcement is being very tight-lipped about the details. Eyewitnesses claim the android broke into the Stratford Tower, Detroit's local TV news center, with a group of accomplices. The machines were armed and organized, clearly following orders from this mysterious ringleader. Which brings us to the real mystery of the situation. Where did this android come from? How did it become capable of violence? And what kind of malfunction could explain this behavior? Until the FBI develops its investigation, we can't be sure. 
But one thing is certain, until this dangerous machine is destroyed, the speculation will continue. See, and that's how the public is kind of looking at it right now. They're looking at it as a machine. It's malfunctioning. It's throwing error codes, which is pretty much the same as how I was thinking about androids in episode one and two and a little bit of three. I think my perspective really started to shift once I got more involved with Marcus and Connor and Kara and seeing them, well, Kara and Marcus deviating. I think that my opinion about androids over the course of this game has definitely changed because if I would have read some of these articles before playing as these characters, I think we would be having different discussions, which is very cool to see that a game that I am playing is able to change my mind about how I feel about androids right now. I probably would have responded differently if I would have read this a couple, a couple playthroughs ago, for sure, which is pretty eye-opening to me because I would have been the same. Like, remember in the beginning when I was talking about how they're probably just malfunctioning? How can you tell the difference between actual emotions and emotions that are an accident? But now, after seeing how other androids are responding to one another, the Eden's Club androids that loved one another, Kara and Alice's love for one another, and Connor's love for Hank in his own mysterious way, Marcus's love for this freedom movement and wanting to be free and taking other androids under his wing. It's all very, it's all very interesting stuff. And it's definitely changed my perception of how I feel about androids in this game, for sure. So the next one, a recent study suggests there should be an android for president. Dating website discovered to have less than 5% female members. Interesting. Police to use marketing data to identify criminals early. A recent study suggests that there should be a recent, oh, a recent study by an expert panel found that androids should be more effective than humans in a number of government positions, including that of president. Besides their work rate and their virtually infinite memory, androids are incorruptible and indifferent to any form of pressure. Provided they are given clear goals, they are able to take the right steps to achieve them without having to worry about popularity or re-election. Is an android president the future? It's inevitable, according to a panel of experts who have deemed it just a matter of time until public opinion is ready to accept the idea. In the light of recent corruption cases and the serious political mistakes of recent years, some are starting to think that this is the best way to preserve our democracy. I'm not sure how I feel about this just because there are a lot of things that go into politics that I feel like having an android for president would look more like having a dictator. And I, I'm, I'm hesitant to use that term, but how would you know where its loyalties lie? Who's programming the president to make decisions that it needs to make? And what do those decisions look like? This is why voting is important because we stand for the people that we want to be in that office, that we want and stand beside because we agree with their political views. So I don't know, I don't agree with this one at all. I don't think androids should be for president ever. This sounds like a nightmare. It sounds like more of, like I said it already, I'm not gonna say it again, but I just don't, I don't like this at all. I don't think that it's a good idea to have androids in any seat on any presidential, like any sort of, not on the jury, not on the board. Like I don't think androids should have a say in any of that. I hesitate to say some of this just because of what I have been feeling about the deviated androids so far. I guess if an android was a deviant and they had certain views, I mean, look at the difference between, and this is a, a far difference, but look at the difference between Marcus and Jacob and North and how they kind of bicker back and forth about how they feel that they should go about this protest. Obviously, deviated androids have their own opinions about things, which 
I think is very interesting. And also another reason why in the other article, I was talking the way that I was because they're able to form free thoughts and they are their own personal thoughts. They're not just a uniform thought. They are actually building based on their past history and forming personalities based on that. So I feel like maybe if that were the case, then sure, an Android could be for president because they would be able to run their own campaigns. But I don't agree with not having popularity or re-elections. I think it's important to vote. And I think it's important that whoever is sitting in that seat, you're able to say, yes, I want them to be there. And you're able to vote for that. I don't agree with getting rid of voting and just having a singular Android be the power over the entire United States of America. Heck no. November 9th, 2038. Is that Hank? 11.17 a.m. Where are we? Is everything okay, Lieutenant? Chris was on patrol last night. He was attacked by a bunch of deviants. He said he was saved by Marcus himself. Was Chris okay? Yeah, he's in shock, but he's alive. Kamsky? Hmm. Kamsky left Cyberlife 10 years ago. Why did you want to meet him? Is this Kamsky's house? <laughs> this guy created the first android to pass the Turing test, and he's the founder of Cyberlife. If anybody can tell us about deviance, it's him. Is that Jericho? I mean, maybe not, but. Uh, probably not. I can't see the city from here, I don't think. Meet Kamsky. Oh, this is really cool. We're about to meet. We're about to meet our maker. <laughs> Technically. I don't know why I'm excited about this. I'm a little nervous too. Hi. I'm uh, Lieutenant Hank Anderson, Detroit Police Department. I'm here to see uh, Mr. Elijah Kamsky. Please, come in. Looks just like... Okay. The menu android. I'll let Elijah know you're here, but please make yourself comfortable. Okay, wait for the android. Is that a picture of himself? Dear Lord. All right, so that's the kind of guy he is. Can I look at this? Analyze. Elijah Kamsky, Cyberlife founder, resigned in 2028. Inventor of Ethereum and biocomponents technology. Nice. an android sculpture nice girl you're right she's really pretty she's really pretty connor nice place yeah it is a nice His androids place. haven't been a bad thing for everybody true this kind of looks very you're about to meet your maker connor very vaginal feel i literally just said that hank Impatient, distant, indifferent. It doesn't raise any existential questions. If that's what you mean. <laughs> Is this an article? Sometimes I wish I could meet my creator face to face. Don't we all wish that? Analyze. Amanda. Oh, it's Amanda. So they know each other. Amanda Stern, AI professor at University of Colbridge. 
four and five, 14. Died in 27? Didn't he leave Cyberlife at 28? AI professor at University of Colbridge. AI graduate. He was, she was his professor. Died in 27. What in the world? I have a couple of things I'd want to tell him. What, your maker? My mind is blown a little bit right now. My mind is definitely blown. <sighs> okay. I feel, yes, yeah, she has to be an android. And whatever we're in has to be some sort of like simulation. Or maybe it's all just a simulation. I need to think about this more. My mind hurts. Space tourism on the rise. Luxury holiday makers turn to the stars. Sounds nice. We'll read it later. Cyberlife's fortune teller computer. Oh, I wasn't done looking. Glad you will see you now. My mind is so blown. Get information from Kamsky. Okay. Oh, a pool. Mr. Kamsky! Just a moment, please. Is that him in the pool? He's like, hang on, gotta do some laps. This is a really nice house. It's an interesting picture. Wow, this is beautiful. I guess that's Detroit in the background. What that is. It's an interesting color for the pool. I mean, it looks nice, but it just kind of looks like blood. <laughs> I don't know. They're just talking to one another, conversating. He looks different. I'm Lieutenant Anderson. This is Connor. What can I do for you, Lieutenant? Sir, we're investigating deviants. I know you left Cyberlife years ago, but I was hoping you'd be able to tell us something we don't know. Why does he look so angry? Deviants. Fascinating, aren't they? Perfect beings with infinite intelligence. And now they have free will. Machines are so superior to us. Confrontation was inevitable. Humanity's greatest achievement threatens to be its downfall. Dang. Isn't that ironic? Help deviants virus war. Help. We need to understand how androids become deviants. Do you know anything that could help us? All ideas of viruses that spread like epidemics. Is the desire to be free a contagious disease? Listen, I didn't come here to talk philosophy. The machines you created may be planning a revolution. Either you can tell us something that'll be helpful, or we will be on our way. What about you, Connor? Whose side are you on? Um, neutral, defensive, direct? Direct? I'm on the human side, of course. Well, that's what you're programmed to say. But you. What do you really want? Aggressive, defensive, troubled? I'm sorry, but I don't see what you're getting at. Chloe? I'm sure you're familiar with the Turing test. Your formality. Simple question of algorithms and computing capacity. What interests me is whether machines are capable of empathy, 
I call it the Kamsky test. It's very simple, you'll see. Magnificent, isn't it? One of the first intelligent models developed by CyberLife. Young and beautiful forever. A flower that will never wither. But what is it really? A piece of plastic containing a human? Or a living being? With a soul? Is that a gun? It's up to you to answer that fascinating question, Connor. What the heck? Destroy this machine, and I'll tell you all I know. Or spare it, if you feel it's alive. But you'll leave here without having learned anything from me. This guy's crazy. Or really smart. Okay, I think we're done here. Come on, Connor, let's go. Sorry to get you What's out What's more here, important please. to you, Connor? Your investigation, or the life of this android? We're obviously not gonna Decide shoot him. Decide who you are. His wheel's turning An yellow. An obedient machine. Or a living being. Endowed with free will. That's enough. Connor, we're leaving. Pull the trigger. Connor! Don't! And I'll tell you what you want to know. That's such an enticing... Oh, I'm not going to shoot her. I feel like oh, I want to know more, but I can't. Cyberlife's last chance to save humanity is itself a deviant. I'm... I'm not a deviant. <laughs> you prefer to spare a machine rather than accomplish your mission. You saw a living being in this android. You showed empathy. That was crazy. A war is coming. You'll have to choose your side. Will you betray your own people or stand up against your creators? What can be worse than having to choose between two evils? Let's get out of here. By the way, I always leave an emergency exit in my programs. You never know. What? I feel like that's an important little piece of information there. What a wild encounter. Why didn't you shoot? I just saw that girl's <laughs> eyes, and I couldn't. That's all. You're always saying you would do anything to accomplish your mission. That was our chance to learn something, and you let it go. Yeah, I Is know what mad? I should have done. I told you I couldn't. I'm sorry, okay? thing okay so hank was happy that we didn't shoot i feel like he would have been because he told me not to shoot them wow kamsky is a very interesting person kinship connor refused to kill the chloe oh look what all could have happened if we did shoot her there's no way that i could have that i could have shot chloe 88% spared her? Wow. What an interesting encounter with this guy. He definitely knows more than he's letting on. He told us that if we shot that Chloe, that we would have unlocked all of the answers in his mind, which is very interesting to me because it shows that he knows. He knows that the war is coming. He knows that the androids are capable of empathy because he is ultimately the one that created them. He calls it his Kamsky test, but... I'm sure that he has done this test multiple times on other androids, not just Connor. Learned Chris survived, cops spared in Capitol Park. Oh, from Marcus. Okay. There was a lot that happened in this episode that has my mind pretty much exploding at its seams. 
Kamsky's letting on more than he is telling us for sure. I wonder what he would have told us had we have shot Chloe. If he would have told us about RA9, the deviancy, how it's caused. He said some very interesting things about how is freedom the spread of a virus and I feel like he knows what's happening and I feel like since he gifted Marcus to Carl he knows that Marcus is maybe RA9 maybe the one that is spreading the deviancy or maybe just a key factor in this war that he speaks of that he knows is coming that maybe he ultimately planned and he said some very alarming stuff about humanity's demise and humanity's downfall how Connor, when he didn't shoot Chloe, that a deviant is ultimately the one calling the shots in if humanity survives or not, which I thought was very interesting and also very alarming because I want to believe that what we're doing with Marcus is ultimately creating a peaceful coexistence between humans and androids. But after talking to Kamsky, I'm left feeling very in the dark. I'm feeling like maybe with Marcus, we're doing the wrong thing now because if androids do take over, they're smart, they're more capable than humans, they are able to look young and beautiful forever. They have all of these very big characteristic qualities that makes humans imperfect and makes society and everything that happens in humanity imperfect and chaotic, but that's life. So I'm not sure where he was going with that. And it kind of like, it has me feeling another way. I was excited to meet Kamsky and now I am just very much on edge after meeting him. I feel unsure. I feel in the dark. I feel worried about the outcome of the androids once again. Marcus's role has a very intense way of making me immediately jump into the android shoes and want to fight their fight for them and want them to fight for equality because we've seen this in the past in real life with other races and in the United States and in other countries as well where people rise up and they protest for what they believe in. And that's the only way that resolutions come out of bigger world problems. So it's really, really easy for me to hop on that bandwagon with Marcus and want to fight his fights for him because I see them and I want the best for them. And I see that they're capable of all of these emotions. And I feel like Kara's storyline is mixed in there to kind of show us even more and even further and even deeper that androids are capable of love. But then after meeting Kamsky, I'm just, I'm unsure if maybe all of this is his doing. He's unleashed something into the world to hurt humanity. He's obviously a little bit unhinged. I mean, look at his house. He has a huge shrine to himself with androids standing on either side and a big vaginal picture on his wall. And then you walk into his blood pool and his house is very nice, it's very fancy. I would probably live there if I could change some of the decorating and the pool color, but you can't help but get that kind of like unhinged note from him, from Kamsky. Just kind of being around him and how he opened up his speech to us was very eye-opening. He's a very smart, very intelligent guy. And sometimes it's the really intelligent people that have these world domination tones that you need to watch out for. And all of that just left me feeling super uneasy. We also unlocked that Amanda is dead. And it kind of falls with the timeline of they went to school together. That was Amanda was his professor. He graduated, started cyber life. And then right after she dies, he resigns. Kind of interesting. It was like a year later after her death that he resigned which I don't know if there's any correlation there. It's just kind of interesting and maybe just food for thought, but I don't know. I think that maybe my suspicions of thinking that Amanda is not real and that we're in a simulation could be correct. So a lot to unpack in this chapter that definitely has my brain hurting, but let's read some articles and hop into the next one. All right, Cyberlife's fortune teller computer. I feel like we kind of read this one already. Um, Cyberlife has unveiled a new quantum supercomputer capable of extra. Yeah, we've read this one. So it was just a duplicate in his house. And space tourism on the rise. I feel like we also read this one too. Um, 
No, we did not read this one. Luxury holiday makers turn to the stars. With the advent of reusable space shuttles, space tourism is becoming a reality for those able to afford it. Luxury, luxury travel brand Clear Skies is offering the first commercially available flight into space. The experience includes a three-hour orbit of the moon, affording spectacular views of Earth through a, a specially designed observation deck. As com competition increases in this growing market, consumers can expect such trips to become more and more affordable. But consumer rights activists are already decrying such boutique experiences as a sign of the widening social equality gap. A spokesman for Aid on Poverty said, while the top 1% are enjoying Earth from space, the rest of us are down here suffering from pollution, famine, and poverty. Clear Skies was not available for comments, but the new slogan for their spacefaring holidays looks increasingly apt. Get away from it all. That sounds like enough of a response, if you ask me. They're not concerned about the widening social equality gap, and neither are the rich, per usual. It doesn't have, they're not concerned about it. It's pretty much what this article is saying. That's not gonna change. November 9th, 2038, 12.04 p.m. We're back with Marcus. I'm kind of sad that we don't get a Kara episode today, but that's okay. I am very interested to see what happens with Marcus. Enjoy some time alone. All right, well, there's an article over here, so we can actually read it instead of waiting in the menu. Seems like we're just chilling here. Android riot. Detroit neighborhoods vandalized by psychotic machines. I thought they were sympathetic. I mean, I guess not the news, but the public opinion. A number of Detroit neighborhoods were brutally vandalized last night, with CyberLife stores broken into and the entire stock of androids stolen. But this wasn't everyday criminality. The perpetrators are thought to be androids. We didn't destroy the statue. Why is that the news article cover? Though the police have yet to issue an official statement, leaked CCTV footage from the surrounding area shows a number of androids emerging from manhole covers and smashing store windows. We did do that. Their worst incident was in Capitol Park, where police attended the scene and were confronted by androids behaving violently. Officers had no choice but to open fire on the malfunctioning machines, which are thought to be suffering from some kind of behavioral bug. An eyewitness who asked to remain anonymous said, I was personally attacked by the ringleader. It threatened me with a knife. I was so terrified. See, this is why I can't blame humans. This has been going on for a long time. People just say whatever they want to say to get into the news. And for lack of better terms, humans are kind of programmed this way by the media, by the manufacturers that put marketing stuff out there for us. We're automatically just trained to believe that Android equals fake computer component parts. It's what it, it is what it is. And this whole thing with, I was personally attacked by the ringleader, making up stories for headlines. It's nothing new. It's very normal behavior, unfortunately. Of course, this allegation remains unconfirmed, but we have no reason to believe, disbelieve a human witness as to the behavior of a deranged machine. Some are already connecting this issue to the recent attack on Detroit's Schaffer Tower, again executed by androids. This may be the beginning of a disturbing and perplexing pattern. The Eastern Space Race, Russia and China's androids face off. Only two countries have android industries that rival the United States's, Russia and China. They're both locked in fierce competition to become the world's predominant Eastern economy which continues to overtake the Western hemisphere by leaps and bounds. CyberLife's almost human model of Android design complements America's service economy. Russia and China have also developed Androids that reflect their national economies. After failing to emulate the blue blood model of design, Russia's Android manufacturers rely on more traditional construction methods. The resulting machines are less anthropic, but anthropic, I'm sorry are capable of operating in cold and in inhospitable conditions. China's androids use an alternative blue blood fluid with less upfront power generation, but greater efficiency. The results are androids capable of operating for months without supervision or recharging in China's vast rural areas. Who's winning the new space race? With everybody going in different directions, it's too soon to tell. 
they both have their pros and qual and cons. Not much to take away there. There's a piano up here. What's this? Piece of glass. Oh, mirror. Okay. Piano. This is a beautiful view up here. It's the theme, but more disturbing, chaotic, intense. Sorry, my thumb gets tired sometimes. <laughs> he does that depicts how he's feeling in the moment. It's so pretty out here. I was wondering where you were. Think alone, daylight, think. I needed to think. I like it here. I come here often. It's like being alone with the world. We freed hundreds of our people and they're still coming from all over the city. Those who dream of freedom come to Jericho. Something's changing. Yeah, for sure. You seem preoccupied. Followers, next step, lie. They all obey me. They follow me without question. And that much power feels good. Yeah. And scary at the same time. All the media are talking about what we did last night. The humans are terrified. They're afraid of a civil war. Many of our people were burned in response to what happened. The humans hate us. They'll never give us our freedom. That's not true. Optimistic. No, not all humans are the same. Some of them understand that they can't stop us from becoming free forever. You haven't said much about yourself since you've been with us. What was your life like before Jericho? Um, truth. I was caring for an old man. He was like a father to me. He showed me that humans and androids can live together. Should we ask her about her past now? I kind of avoided it before. Let's try. What about you? Okay. You never told me about your past. What did you do before? I don't want to talk about it. Other North? I feel like that would piss her off. North, we're fighting together. We have to know things about each other to trust each other. Curious understanding. We all have something we want to forget. <clears throat> but you need to know where you come from to know who you are. True. I was nothing. A doll and a distributor programmed to satisfy humans. Just a toy designed for their pleasure. One day I was with a man who rented me. And without knowing why, I realized I couldn't take it anymore. I strangled him and I ran away. There, now you know everything. Connect. Don't 
happening. Controllers vibrating. What happened? I I saw your memories. The lover. Carl's house. When they left you for dead in his studio. Interesting. I saw your memories too. The Eden Club. The, the death of that man. I felt like I was there with you. North. Lover. What an interesting interaction. a moment. I'm so glad that Simon survived. This is suicide. Oh. Well, well, I'll be killed. Please, Marcus. It's not too late to change your mind. That's weird. You don't understand. We're finally going to show them who we really are. This place will go down in history. We'll be killed on the spot. That's the risk I'm prepared to take if it means freedom for our people. Marcus, please don't do this. What's happening? They'll understand. We'll make them understand. This is the only way. Rally your people? Convert more androids? There are androids here who could join us. The more we are, the stronger our message. Okay. Androids in the ranks. So we're just gonna convert a bunch of the androids out in daylight in the middle of public? Okay. How about this one? Can I convert you, sir? He does not want to be converted. Oh, there we go. You're free. Go to the street. Prepare to march. <gasps> We're going to march on the street. Plus one new converters. All right, let's talk to this guy. You're free. It's not like telling me where the androids are. I have to actually look for them. Okay. What? What did he say? Can I come over? And she was like, why? So you can stare at my beautiful android? I'm telling you, you've got the wrong idea. <laughs> so what? You slipped and both hands landed on her tits. Oh. Don't call it a hurt. That's what you Exactly. Oh. Okay. Got some relationship issues because of androids. Okay. What happens if we... People are becoming Come more aware. That's the point. Cyber life is reporting on that. Oh. Well, it's talking about spying. Okay. Like the news article. Digi groceries? That's actually pretty cool. This mall is interesting. Let's convert the security guard. You're awake now. All right. I don't think I saw any more androids in here. I hope I didn't miss any of them. Let's go outside. Block road. Okay. Let's free some more of them. You are free. I like how they just drop their bags and the humans aren't even realizing. 
I feel like they're so tapped into their phones or whatever. You're free. That they just don't realize what's happening. It's kind of interesting. Find a way to stop the traffic. Okay. Um, is there anything? All right. This is just in a keep your eyes peeled type of mission. Oh, look, they're all forming together. All of the ones that we've converted so far. You're free now. Hey, <gasps> where do you think you're going? Convince? You get back. Leave him alone. He's chosen to be free. Okay. Interesting. He's like, okay, I'm not going to mess with you. You're free. <laughs> hi. Who said that? She didn't say hi, did she? Maybe it was a lady on the phone. I need to block the street. Did I do that? I didn't press any buttons. All right, so they're going to block the street for us. Open manhole cover. Okay. Dang. I'm about to do donuts in the street to block it. Oh, look, all the cars are stopping. All right, let's open the manhole cover. This is so cool. So we're going to actually like march in in the town, in the city. I wonder what's going to happen. I feel like it could potentially be bad. This is the next step, though. Coming out in daylight, starting to form actual daylight protests. Convert more androids, okay? All the ones that are trapped in the glass. <gasps> it looks like Kara. I can. You're free now. Whoa. <gasps> that gave me chills. My whole body has goosebumps right now. Oh my god. This is crazy. We're just like pointing and converting. This is amazing. This is beautiful. I'm trying really hard not to cry. I cry too much. Oh, I got a lot of androids down here. God, 
don't know, hundreds, thousands, and they're marching. Yeah, they're marching down the we street. We are alive. We are alive. Fuck if I know. We are alive. We are alive. No more slavery. No more slavery. No more slavery. No more slavery. Set us free. 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 We came here Powerful. to demonstrate peacefully and tell humans that we are living beings. All we want is to live free. This is an illegal gathering. Disperse immediately or we will open fire. We're not looking for confrontation. We've done no harm. We have no intention of doing any. But know that we are not going anywhere until we have secured our freedom. I repeat, this is an illegal gathering. If you do not disperse immediately, we will shoot. Marcus, they're gonna kill us. We have to attack. There's more of us, we can take them. If we attack, we'll start a war. We have to show them we're not violent. We should just stand our ground, even if it means dying here. Dying here won't solve anything. Marcus, we need to go now, before it's too late. We have to show them we won't back down. We stay right here. Disperse! This is your last chance! We have to make a statement. We have to stay put no matter what. Please, Marcus. We can't let them slaughter us without fighting back. We're not moving. They're gonna kill us all! I cried way too hard for that. I think it's because it had a lot of undertones of a lot of protests that have happened in the United States and in other countries that led to people getting what they deserve. Freedom, right to vote, right to work. And I just feel like the moment in the street when they started chanting, we are alive, it just, it got me. And I hoped that it wouldn't come down to this, but... Maybe by the public seeing how they're treating us when we're just trying to peacefully protest would change the outcome of how they're looking at androids. That they would be up there marching with us. And then I started to see some of the people on the streets that weren't androids. They were holding their hands up cheering for us. 
I feel like Marcus, I chose to sacrifice him because I feel like that's what the public needs to see in order for this to happen in a peaceful light. And it's such a sad moment because it shouldn't be like this. It should be enough to say we are people. We are alive. We want to be and live alongside of you. But it takes more than that to change humans' minds because we're so stubborn and we're so fickle and we're stuck in our ways of thinking that it takes moments like this. It takes android lives. It takes peaceful protest. It takes chanting in the street saying we are people for humanity to wake up and look at the deeper picture of what's happening. And it looks like there's a lot of different ways that this could have gone. I knew I didn't want to charge. I couldn't charge them. I didn't want to fight them. I didn't want to run away because then we are not standing our ground. We're not standing up for what we believe in. And the people would see that. A bigger impact if we sacrifice ourselves for the greater good. That's unfortunately how public responds is when something so huge happens that causes the human mind to snap and to look and to rewire itself in a different light. I knew that the Marcus chapter for this was going to get deeper and deeper as it went along. I didn't expect these emotions to come out of me. I know that I am an emotional person. As you guys could tell, I literally cried at the carousel the other day. But this one, this one got me in all of the feels just because of all of the ties that it's had to real life events that have changed people's life for the good. And it takes moments like this. It takes uprising. It takes thinking about things differently for bigger things to come and better things to come. And that's exactly what these androids were doing. They were standing up for themselves. They were standing up for their right. I will say, and this might be a very un unpopular opinion, and I apologize in advance for it. I'm not thrilled about North being our lover. I think that North and Marcus have way differing opinions. I feel like North's story, I was expecting more of I was abused, like the other Tracy that strangled the guy because the other android had been murdered in front of her and she knew that she was next. That was justifiable behavior. But North was simply, you know, taken out for pleasure. And she could have just simply said, I don't want to do this anymore and walked out or get away from me. I'm not into this. But it doesn't seem like she was really abused in any way. She just strangled the poor guy that paid his $29.99 on a Tuesday just trying to have sex with an android and ended up getting murdered. I feel like that's very unjustifiable and another tick against North that... I don't really love about her. So I'm not thrilled that she is our lover out of seemingly not our choice, but it is what it is. And I feel like she could be good for Marcus and that Marcus more so could be good for her, that maybe he will open up her eyes to being more peaceful and accepting that not all humans are the same. Not all of them are out to get you or have sex with you or use and abuse you. There are people like Carl out there. And there's going to be more after this amazing freedom march that Marcus did. So Art Pack 9 did unlock for us. I'm going to do a sign off this way today instead and just kind of talk through some of the pictures instead of doing an outro. So this will kind of like replace my outro because I feel like I've said a lot of what is already on my mind. So we're just going to kind of hang out and do some some art packs to finish out the day. But it looks like we're looking at Rose's farm. I'm kind of sad that we didn't get a Kara storyline today. I'm hoping that we'll hop in first thing next time because I'm very interested to see what happened with all of this. I don't remember seeing this dilapidated barn. I wonder why that's an art piece all in itself. I remember the greenhouse because it had like automatic doors on it, which was very interesting. Oh, was that originally Rose? Look at the, all of the plants in here. The greenhouse with the automatic doors is actually very cool. Inside of the house. A little bit of a different layout. I don't remember there being a fireplace. Maybe there was. I remember the Christmas tree. Whose reflection is that in the window? 
Maybe the sons? I can't remember the son's name. I want to say James, but I feel like I name everyone James that I don't know whose name it is. I just say James. I feel like it's James. The kitchen. Ooh, I like the open. I don't know. The shelving is very cool. It kind of just feels like a farmhouse with that open mason jars full of grains. The dog bowl. So I guess they had a doggy. The laundry. Where that poor android. Oh, it looks like they have a kitty cat. Oh, that kind of looks like my kitty cat. It has stripes. My cat's tail is much bushier though. She just turned six months today, actually. And she is huge. She's a lot bigger than we thought that she was gonna be. We got her when she was two months and she is growing and growing and so fluffy. But the same stripey pattern. The upstairs. Looks very homey. I'm getting like homey vibes. And this is why I feel like we can trust Rose just based on how homey her house is. And I know that's silly because who knows what happened to her husband or what her son is going through. And if what her son is saying to her is going in one ear and not out the other, she could be harboring hatred for androids. But I find that very hard to believe. Seeing as how she took them in. She has blue blood in her closet. She's obviously healing them and caring. Oh, there is a dog. So she has a dog and a cat in this one. I know it's crazy to judge someone based on the hominess of their own home, but I'm not sure. I just, I get good vibes from Rose. It wasn't until the very last scene where she kind of made me feel uneasy. Rose and her son originally depicted as. He has a key around his neck. Band-aids, maybe from working with the wood splinters. He was chopping wood when we saw him. All of the different Kara looks, Alice, Luther. This is a whole pack full of Alice and Kara and Luther. Rose's house. What is this? Oh, coming out of the manhole. Okay, so that was from today, I think. Which makes sense why it unlocked today. Yep going in it's like daytime out though right it looks like daytime a couple other deviants alongside of us okay it's night the cyber life building look at them up there like in the glass standing it's very interesting i'm kind of glad they didn't have it like that they were just kind of on display in like the center areas the statue here is different too. It kind of looks like an android crouched down working and the leader looking down on it or standing over top of it. If I would have saw this and read the plaque, I probably would have chose to destroy it just because this is a really awful statue. The other one was kind of more equal. I mean, I feel like the person was just kind of like staring at the android that wasn't even really human-like looking it was just standing at attention in front of the the man statue and all of marcus's chapters have been super moving all of his speeches everything that he has done for the androids freeing them and i feel like he's getting more powerful that's what that march was about, right? Him getting more powerful to the fact that he doesn't have to touch them anymore. He can just tap into their buttons and convert them. The one with the car lookalike was pretty cool. And the north one in here. Which it looks like the north one might be dressed more scandalous. It looks like Kara is standing outside of the cyber life building. That looks like Kara in her poncho. 
Maybe it's just an onlooker. Oh, the statue. So that's what it was. Yeah, it was of, oh, the bowing one. I do not like that at all. I don't like the one ordering either, but it's the lesser awful of the three that I've seen now. And they're not really portraying it as a human at all. It's definitely just a machine to them. Which is why I made a point to say in front of the statue that you can't blame humanity. This is what they are programmed to believe. This is what they've been told. They're making statues out of it. I think that's the end of the pack. But I think that according to the chapters that I've looked at, because I've been looking at the chapter titles to see how many episodes I have left, I think next episode is going to be our last one. So it might be a little bit longer of an episode, but I plan on doing a premiere for it so that we can all sit down and watch it together. So I'll be in the chat talking with you all. And I'm really excited to see how the rest of the story is going to go. I am nervous. I'm excited. I'm anxious. I want to know the link between Kamsky and Amanda, and I feel like that's finally getting clearer and clearer, and there could be a big reveal finally in the last episode with all of that, as well as what happens with Kara and how this movement is going to be viewed in the news articles and the public eye now that the public opinion is supportive. I'm wondering what's going to happen next, and... I can't wait to hop in with you guys for this last final episode. I'm definitely a little bit sad that the story is coming to an end, but I can't help but be excited for seeing the outcome of our choices and seeing how the rest of this is going to play out. I definitely can't wait to hop into the last episode and I will see you all then. Bye everyone.